short term, which involved uh, acute coronary syndrome uh, or acute cardiogenic shock and acute uh, refractory heart failure, acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome and uh, acute on chronic uh, cardiomyopathy. Uh, postpartum, etc., and the devices that is needed uh, for such uh, pathology. Right now, uh, uh, I'll be talking about the long-term MCS, uh, which um, covers uh, all sorts of cardiomyopathies, dilated, non-ischemic, uh, and ischemic cardiomyopathy, valvular cardiomyopathy, idiopathic cardiomyopathy, non-reversible uh, intoxication cardiomyopathy, postpartum uh, non-reversible uh, cardiomyopathy, post-chemotherapy, non-reversible cardiomyopathy, and uh, a bridge to uh, destination and bridge to transplantation. Uh, whether with uh, uh, left ventricular failure, right ventricular failure, or bi ventricular failure. Of course, hypertrophied cardiomyopathy and restrictive cardiomyopathy and obstructive cardiomyopathy, all these uh, are uh, part of the end stage heart disease that is in need of uh, or needing heart transplantation slash uh, MCS. So, uh, <clears throat> this is a history uh, just to show. Uh, uh, Danton Coley and uh, Michael DeBakey and both were leaders in uh, MCS since the 60s and uh, both has uh, uh, invested uh, quite thorough and uh, Total Fisher Heart uh, came, idea came out uh, from DeBakey when he was supported and assisted by Danton Coley. Uh, this is uh, crazy cardiac surgery and Michael DeBakey with uh, 1,700 uh, assistants all around him. Um, the uh, intermax scoring and um, and I have uh, elaborated thoroughly about uh, this. These are the devices of the uh, long-term uh, mechanical circuitry support, uh, heart mate, uh, hardware, sorry. And uh, which is the HPAD and uh, Jarvik here, then and, and HeartMate 2 is here, BiVAD, uh, extracorporeal, uh, Berlin Heart, uh, and Thoratic as well. Uh, this is how it looks with the uh, driver and the battery for the LVAD, whether it is HeartMate or Hardware, or uh, two or three HeartMates or Hardware. And this is again uh, Nova Core. And uh, HVAD, uh, sorry, Jarvik 2000, again Jarvik 2000, HeartMate 3, uh, BiVAD, and here Total Artificial Heart, you cut Total Artificial Heart, you cut all this. Literally, you come and cut into the atrium right under the tricuspid and, 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 tri and mitral valve. You remove all the ventricles, like it, the left atrial appendage and you insert a cuff here uh, to go to um, uh, hold the tricuspid mechanical valve and you insert another cuff here to to hold the, the uh, mitral uh, mechanical valve and then you implant uh, these two each on a side with the diaphragm and the pneumable device with polyethylene covered uh, within to uh, pneumatic, so the air comes in through the drive lines and pump in and out to push the blood uh, through the mechanical aortic valve and mechanical uh, pulmonary valve and mechanical aortic valve. It's a very, very complex procedure and uh, very few centers worldwide does it. So we are one of them. <clears throat> the uh, these are what we have at King Faisal. So we have the heart mates, all of them. One, two, and uh, three. We have uh, uh, the total artificial heart uh, as a durable device, and we do have the HVAD as well. Um, so I can define the durable device into many definitions. Uh, uh, axial uh, or centrifugal, pulsatile or non-pulsatile, so you just name it. Um, the simple thing away is uh, pulsatile is an old uh, 
uh, virgin uh, they why did they do it they did it because they wanted to imitate the heart function uh, having it pumping and having systolic and diastolic so we all know that perfusion even for the coronaries uh, differs between the systolic and diastolic the rca versus the left hand uh, let, let alone um, the rest of the body so you have the intestine, uh, they love systolic and diastolic and, and uh, hence uh, in continuous flow, you start to have angiodysplasia and uh, the bleeding and uh, von Willebrand factor and, uh, and uh, the, the changes of all uh, neovascularization and uh, arterioles and venules uh, who are uh, perfusing the in organ uh, mainly into the gut system but it does affect the kidney and the liver and the and the uh, uh, even eye and, and brain. So that is, that's where they were wanted pulsatile. The reason they did not proceed with the pulsatile or, or continue doing it because the uh, thrombogenicity in pulsatile uh, is, um, is very high and the stroke rate was super high and uh, uh, so bleeding versus uh, uh, thrombosis and hence axial flows, centrifugal magnetic uh, flows with the uh, levitated uh, pumps and uh, providing continuous non-pulsatile flow. Uh, some companies came with this uh, third uh, beat uh, trigger uh, like HeartMate uh, 3, uh, where uh, after certain RPMs, uh, they start to, the rounding of the levitated uh, centrifugal pump uh, stops uh, every third beat, completely stops and starts again in a fraction of a second. The, the stopping and starting to, to uh, load the ventricle a little bit, so the ventricle will be able to generate an ejection uh, hence systolic uh, uh, and diastolic uh, um, 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 pressure, which is sort of a wash out, they call it. So it did affect a lot the uh, thrombogenicity uh, to the better. And uh, it opens the aortic valve every third uh, beat or second or fourth, dependent on how bad the myocardium or how good and um, it did decrease the uh, stroke rate and thrombogenicity. Um, uh, axial flows uh, are uh, starting with Micromed from Debeki that is really wasn't really very successful. Um, the Jarvik 2000, which again wasn't successful, not because the device was bad, but because the surgeons who uh, uh, Debeki and Jarvik were not very lovable people. Um, Debeki was hated by every single human being on earth and uh, Jarvik uh, is a greedy uh, uh, surgeon who uh, did not want to share the uh, technology with the biomedical engineers and the companies uh, as a corporate so they can evolve the research and development and invest more into expansion of uh, implantation utilization of the device so we did uh, 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 stay for a few centers and uh, limited his technology uh, uh, just as an example we have signed a contract with them five no six and a half years ago and until now they haven't even started the first training so just tells you and again i remember during my training the same hospitals were not really uh, having any response corresponds from jarvik although it's a very good device it's the small little device you implant in the apex and uh, and uh, the drive line goes to uh, through sub uh, auxiliary to the neck to the uh, uh, skull uh, right uh, behind the parietal loop and uh, why they're in the skull because uh, the vascularization of the skull is quite high uh, uh, thus no uh, drive line infection Going to the centrifugal pul uh, pumps, um, uh, our hardware and uh, heart mates and uh, uh, three, not two, three, and uh, Tiroma, which died, and Aerochloride, which died. So, uh, um, uh, mainly right now we're using centrifugal pumps between HeartMate 3 and hardware. So, <clears throat> I, I really like this algorithm. 
uh, which is a selection of bad. And it's exactly what I, what I mentioned earlier um, in the other slides. So you have advanced heart failure, ejection fraction is that 20 or 25% and failed optimized medical therapy or successful. So it dependent into the walk test, dependent onto the uh, uh, venous uh, oxygen uh, saturation and uh, venous oxygen, the peak venous oxygen saturation as well and uh, dependent on the uh, refractory admission to the hospital, dependent on to what we have mentioned when the patient is in trouble. So whether he goes to transplant or LVAD, he has to be eligible for heart transplant and we have to find a donor who are uh, compatible and heart transplant happens. Uh, if he is eligible for transplant, but the donor is not there, so he needs a bridge. Uh, if he is not eligible for transplant, uh, for so many factors that is written here, uh, then we can consider destination therapy. Um, types, uh, as I mentioned, pulsatile and non-pulsatile. Uh, um, uh, uh, we have uh, 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 pulsatile in general, what I mentioned to you, it could be like a HeartMate 3, a HeartMate 1, the XVE, uh, which was utilized in 2000, and can be full metallic centrifugal with uh, stopping, but it's uh, 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 intervening every, uh, every uh, second and a half to stop and generate this uh, pulsatility. And... Uh, and um, and uh, however, this uh, affects a lot on the on the uh, size of the uh, uh, pump itself uh, because uh, they're high and huge uh, pumps, and they're used to be implanted uh, either extracorporeal, and if it's intercontrol corporeal, it has to be inside the abdomen, as the thorax does not take this uh, uh, size. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, XVE HeartMate 1 was a very successful device. It was extremely strong and um, it did not have a lot of complication. The only complication is intra-abdominal and uh, on, on transplant, it's a nightmare because you convert your uh, uh, chest surgery into chest and abdominal surgery. The other pulsatiles are, um, are not interesting because they're very old generations, the first generation in the 70s and 80s, and we don't uh, really recommend, neither it has been, it's, it's vintage in the museums right now. Um, uh, uh, but why were, wh what was the idea for, for the pulsatility? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's controlling the heart rate, it's controlling the filling, uh, the preload and afterload, uh, the speed, the rhythm, the, the uh, so all that is controlled, but of course it has its downside. Uh, trans, uh, total artificial heart is a pulsatile machine, and uh, it is extremely loud. The drive, the drive uh, console, which is the freedom uh, console, and uh, even the big blue is is uh, is uh, noisy console. So. Um, but it can give you really a, a, a good uh, out, outflow uh, or flow uh, up, to, up to eight, nine, 10 liter if needed. Of course, no one needs 10 liter except if they are in sepsis and, uh, and basically, basically severely vasoplegic. I'm interested more in the non-pulsatile flows and uh, these are either axial, which is the um, Jarvik and HeartMate 2, uh, and the Novacore or centrifugal, which is Heartware and HeartMate 3. Uh, it is uh, the most implantable uh, devices uh, utilized right now and uh, utilized as an LVAD. Uh, of course, we started the BiVAD as well. They are very quiet and inserted intrathoracic cha cha um, cage and uh, with a smaller drive line, and so many studies showed the smaller drive line, the more flexible drive line, uh, the less the drive line infection. Uh, so uh, uh, but the, the downside is von Willebrand syndrome uh, and factor. Uh, it gets activated, and that has a different cascade and hematological. I let you read it. I'm not going to go in details. However, it has been a problem, and it's still a problem. 
uh, um, usually in the non pulsatile we keep the mean pressure because there is no systolic diastolic except when the patient start ejecting and you have to be careful when the patient start ejecting because the patient that means a sign of recovery if the patient start ejecting two three four seven months after surgery or one year after surgery or two years after surgery they start coming and coming with systolic and diastolic 80 over 50 90 over over 60 120 over over 65 so this is a time when you really need to uh, wean the patient and explant the device or decondition the device um, that's why a map of 70 is the ideal one and having a ventricle uh, almost unloaded not completely unloaded having uh, uh, some ejection to wash out the aortic root and aortic valve avoiding the thrombosis now you cannot implant a VAD into a mechanical valve existence in the heart. Any mechanical valve in the heart, especially in the left heart, if it's an LVAD, you have to explant them and re-implant a biological valve, and you need to also put them on a proper anticoagulation therapy as a as a valve, not as a VAD, because VAD now we we know that we went to INR down to 1.5 but the valve is two to three. If it's aortic, it's mitral, two and a half to three and a half. So you need to be careful because subvalvular uh, thrombosis is quite common in, in, in these patients. Um, uh, uh, of course, you educate the patients, so hence space awareness for the bad parameters. And of course, communication between patient to coordinator and coordinating to the surgeon is quite crucial. You constantly communicate between these two and, 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 and the coordinator and us to know uh, infection, uh, um, uh, um, if there is a bleeding, if there is melina, if there is uh, uh, anemia, if there is uh, jaundice, if there is uh, um, <coughs> RV failure, uh, ascites, pulmonary edema, all that uh, symptoms and signs that has to be monitored closely. So you can have a proper uh, lifestyle, patient lifestyle, and quality of life. These are the the management. Uh, you 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 manage the ECG. You manage the afterload sensitivity. You manage the preload. You manage the anticoagulation. Uh, you manage uh, a patient if they are uh, positional and uh, and the VAD was implanted wrongly uh, towards the septum and the suck down events was happening with the patient is uh, dehydrated some patients are cardiac cachexic when they come to you and they don't want to improve they they really refuse the fact that that they need to work on themselves they believe that we are a magician and uh, once you implant uh, uh, an, a pump uh, you become an iron man and this should uh, fix your life even if you, you, your psychological status your marriage your your whatever and it's sad because they are uh, uh, non-compliant uh, patients and uh, ignorant patients. So prior to implanting an ILVAD, you have to do a thorough test of uh, how intelligent and how supported they are by the community and by the family. You have to make sure that they don't go to the desert and, and, and camp there for ages. Uh, you have to make sure that electricity is uh, plugged into their cities and their town and their country and their apartment and it's not shut down. You have to make sure that uh, they are clean hygienically. And uh, as you all know, all our more, most of our patients dental have a problem. Look at their nails, toes, um, feet, uh, gums. Uh, a lot of them have a disgusting uh, presentation. So pl trust me, if that is existent, then an infection driveline is definitely going to be existent. Uh, thrombosis and stroke, that tells you the compliance basically with our third generation devices, they don't thrombose easily. Um, so so uh, if you are compliant to medication, um, and mechanical malfunction, which is failure in the device. And uh, among all more than 200 um, planted uh, durable device in our center, only uh, one has uh, failed and was uh, successfully exchanged uh, this year, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> so uh, the uh, VAD in the community and the millennial started the, the PVAD and IVAD. 
percutaneous and internal and external. The PVAD is external, chromatic uh, as from P, and uh, that's why external and how it looks uh, this way, this way, sorry, uh, with the air coming in to push the polyethylene diaphragm within to between, which is a separation a barrier between the air and the blood. Internal is basically a, uh, <coughs> an, <coughs> an intercorporeal <coughs> device that you can <coughs> add, excuse me. Um, it can generate, of course, these big devices up to, up to seven liters and, uh, and can be utilized as an ILVAD or BIVAD. Uh, these are some patients who are as an ILVAD and these are some patients who are as a BIVAD and you can see how he is implanted as an ILVAD and as a BIVAD. And this is the console way they push. But so remember, pulsatile is equal to huge noise. And it is really bothersome. I remember when I was rounding at these patients and even here, you, you, you hear the, the, the console sound from the beginning of the corridor prior to entering the way prior to entering the ICU, CSICU. XVE is HeartMate 1, and, uh, and look at this, up to 10 liter of flow. It's a huge device, but it's at, at, uh, implanted in the abdomen, so uh, but not really uh, user-friendly, and it's really difficult to remove, and it is uh, distillation therapy. But we did a transplant one of these patients here, and it was a uh, young uh, patient. Um, uh, the heart made two is uh, the uh, axial flow, and of course, as we know, it's non pulsatile. It uh, it gives you a high flow as well, and uh, it has an RPM between 8,000 and 15,000. We always have it at 9,000 uh, RPMs in general, and uh, it is utilized as a long term uh, support. Uh, uh, anything medium to long to medium is non-existent anymore because no one gets an ILVAD gets transplanted prior to 1.5 to two years. All our patients are two years plus uh, on uh, the waiting list. It's a bridge to transplant or destination therapy approved FDA. So you can see the differences evolution of the size. This is the the HVE XVE sorry HeartMate uh, one, and you can see how huge. Uh, the cannulas and how huge our info outflow and the and the thickness of this is big as well. And look at drive line, drive line and the velour. It's thicker than this drive line velour. And look, this is the baby of this. And even HeartMate three is even better. You can see the axial. This is centrifugal. Nidur. This is axial. Elif ifur zil dawran hawlen nafsa. Um. This is the Jarvik 2000, it's a fantastic device. I really like this device. I have implanted a couple of them in France. And uh, I was really sad not having this device here because it goes to, to adult and pediatric and it's really user friendly. The RPM is quite high. And I don't like devices with high RPMs because it can uh, it cause hemolysis. Of course, it's used for uh, long-term support as a bridge to uh, transplant. Uh, this is how it... Uh, the charger looks like and the battery here and the monitor here and uh, um, uh, uh, this is uh, tunneled uh, out of the abdomen here which probably I believe the first patient in 2009 if I'm not mistaken no earlier earlier than 2000 2006 I believe uh, but the rest here it's in the skull it, it comes here on the uh, lateral uh, side, lateral posterior side. Um, this is HeartMate 3, so you can see the evolution uh, that I put it uh, gradually, HeartMate 1, HeartMate 2, and uh, Jarvik, then HeartMate 3. And it's much smaller than HeartMate 2, and it's much smaller than HeartMate 1, and uh, it's thicker It's thicker than HeartMate, than HeartWare, thicker. Um, uh, and this is shorter which is better, shorter, the hardware is longer, but the hardware is really user-friendly, very nice and beautiful, elegant. So this is bigger than HeartMate 1. You can see here the magnetic levitated uh, um, pump and uh, rotation, and uh, you can see this is not long like the hardware. It's short, this inflow cannula, but this is much thicker than hardware. Hardware region in Hina, not almost. Um, uh, 
and you can use hardware and heart mate uh, in, in minimum invasive or less invasive approach uh, LVAD implantation, which almost 60% of our LVAD, if not more, I think we reached even more than 60% of our LVAD, even probably almost uh, three uh, fourth of our patients are going into minimum invasive if there is no risk of RV failure. Uh, this is the Cardio West Total Artificial Heart in Cardia, which is bridge to transplant, and it's approved FDA for bridge destination therapy. Uh, uh, however, no one does that because it's a torture to the humanity, the sound of the console. This one, we still have it here at King Faisal, but this is no longer utilized. It's a 200 kilogram uh, weight um, uh, console uh, as high as myself, but when I was resident, I was I had only this device and I was trained on it and it's super friendly in how you utilize it. Polyurethane diaphragm and Medtronic mechanical valves. We still utilize four mechanical valves, uh, two in the uh, uh, pulmonary and the aortic position and two in the mitral and tricuspid position. This is 70 ml, the, th the 50 ml came in and uh, it was really um, uh, friendlier for uh, smaller uh, body surface areas and um, and it has increased our utilization in this uh, age group with bioreticular failure uh, the indication uh, just before i put uh, go to the bad issue the indication of this is all of the above that causes bioreticular failure postpartum chemotherapy post cardio post cardiotomy with no reversibility in the myocardium the rv and the lv is gone after long bypass and after many weeks of uh, ECMO support, post bypass, um, total fissure heart can comes in. And it's of course it's a redo, so it's going to be a nightmare to implant this. We have we have also done this here. Um, uh, it can happen for uh, also dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, it can happen for uh, restrictive constructive cardiomyopathy with biventricular failure. As we know, restrictive and obstructive, uh, the LV function is always good. The RV is uh, bad but it has to be biventricular failure, uh, non-reversible to use that. It has to be also in one indication in uh, 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 frequent, recurrent, uh, malignant arrhythmia. So VFib, VTAC, you're gonna explant all myocardia. Myocardia is really sick, the electricity is completely poor and the patient is developing VFib, VTAC all the time with faint uh, process with uh, CCU, with intubation. You need to remove the whole heart and transplant the patient or uh, implant a total artificial heart. Complications. So like every single device, complication starts with uh, a foreign body inside the blood, bleeding, thrombosis, infection and uh, the devices that durable devices can have a suck down problem because they are in the ventricle and if the ventricle is empty due to dehydration due to rv failure due to many 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 reasons due to increase the rpms and uh, unloading fastly quicklier or faster than having the rv filling the lv or having a resistant pulmonary uh, vascular resistance so resistant and going down that's what i mean by resistant pulmonary vascular resistance um, uh, despite the uh, ILVAD implantation, despite the nitric oxide, despite the flulan, a post uh, despite the milrinone, you still have a very high resistance pulmonary vasculature. And this high resistance comes from either cardiac, which is a long, long, prolonged sickness that patient is not uh, has is, is not willing to have surgery, or basically a patient have COPD, restrictive uh, respiratory disease, or interstitial lung problem. You know, you all you know all the indication of uh, and the cause of uh, resistance in the pulmonary pressures and vasculature. Um, device malfunction. We've mentioned that the hemolysis. We've mentioned uh, when hemolysis happens simply when there is a thrombus, a thrombus in the inflow, uh, centrifugal or axial flow where it can uh, obstruct the. Um, a passage and the flow and uh, having squeezed, uh, killed or broken RBCs and released uh, heme and globin. And we know that heme and globin are uh, basically containing a lot of protein that can has LDH and, uh, and uh, this will uh, go to the liver and raise the LDH level. And you're going to look into that in the uh, <coughs> Laboratory investigation, you're going to also do the um, ramp test and uh, 
and uh, to identify hemolysis. So all these things, I don't want to go into detail because it's way too subspecialized for you. Um, arrhythmias, we mentioned arrhythmias and uh, some arrhythmias are due to arrhythmia, basically malignancies that the patient has uh, 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 and need ablation. If uh, we cannot ablate, then we need to uh, bypass the patients and let the patient have uh, arrhythmia at all time because both RV and LV are supported. If the, you have an LVAD and the patient have VF, uh, the LVAD will still uh, work, but at some point the RV will fail because the RV is dependent into the perfusion of the RCA and arrhythmias do not perfuse. So uh, when constant arrhythmia, uh, we go into total pressure heart or the total bivad and let the heart fibrillate and dance as much as uh, he wants until we transplant the heart. Um, uh, um, we, when there is an LVAD and there is an arrhythmia due to suck down, suctioning events, due to RV failure, due to uh, any other induce, uh, 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 induced uh, reason, uh, you don't uh, perform CPR because the flow is running. You shock the patient so the RV goes back to normal. Um, and if you try to cardiovert many times but do not CPR, just immediately contact the surgeon. And uh, the, uh, the uh, ICU, they really, really don't want to understand. So you, when you have a bad program, you need to be present in the ICU all the time and teach them what to do. Because trust me, you think you can open a program and many, 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 many probably of you and of the society have approached me asking about opening a program. And the program is not one man person, it's everyone. And the program meaning you're gonna kiss your family goodbye, you're gonna kiss your private life goodbye, you're, gonna, you're not gonna travel, you're not gonna have friends, you're not gonna have a, uh, events, you're not gonna have anything. You're gonna have to live in a hospital and you can, you have to know every single pitfall in MCS so that your patient survive. Because any pitfall that even if it's tiny and it's missed, the patient dies. So don't rush, I'm really, really surprised surprised with centers are pushing for a bad program and many centers tried and many centers failed not only in Saudi but and not only in the Middle East but worldwide because you cannot do it on your own you have to have a, a, a full knowledge and experience and a team and a backup and affiliation it's a full program where where uh, uh, you need to anticipate and uh, discuss um, hypotension and hypertension. So when the patient's hypertensive, that means the mean pressure is high, the mean arterial pressure goes above 90, and uh, that will uh, be a counteracting flow to the to the uh, uh, outflow cannula, and it's going to cause uh, high raised RPMs in the bad, and that's going to cause thrombosis, and uh, basically both going to fight with each other. The heart is going to fight the bad because it wants to eject. So at that time, you need to either start ACE inhibitors and uh, beta blockers and uh, some diuresis to make sure that the patient's heart, uh, uh, blood pressure is controlled, or probably the heart is recovering, so you need to wean and explant the device. Um, hypotension, uh, loss of preload. So if we verify that, why loss of preload? Patient dehydrated, possibly. Patient have RV failure and the RV is not pumping, so preload is gone, possibly. So you, you need to do echo, you need to do uh, uh, right heart cath, you need to do uh, pulmonary, uh, test the pulmonary pressures, you need to some invasive measures uh, and, uh, and uh, treat the current uh, situation that caused this uh, uh, complication. Depression, uh, it broke my heart. One day I had to consult uh, counselor patients over many months. Uh, uh, when I was in training. Thank God I haven't faced that here, but I have faced a guy who who turned out to be a drug addict uh, uh, or went into addiction and uh, we uh, psychotherapied him for a long time, but uh, uh, <clears throat> he he was out of reach. He did not want to attend any more um, um, uh, clinics. So he tried to cut his device uh, cable and we brought him in and we worked on him again and uh, Funny enough, he's still alive. Um, I refuse to give him a heart because uh, if I give him a heart and he's not compliant, he's not going to take any immunosuppressant and he will die. And it's a waste of heart because all our VAD people are blood group O, which is uh, the blood group where the, our waiting list is above 150 patients. So we have to VAD them. So we really put the VAD in patients who are literally in need of VAD, not for fun. Uh, and I'm not going to waste the blood group O oh, for this gentleman who's not going to be compliant and who's a drug addict, even if he is a young patient. Um, 
if these patients are re resistant to uh, treatment for her, their adjustment uh, uh, disorder, then we will counsel therapy and uh, uh, the priest or ahlo uh, or imam or whatever, and uh, we simply sedate him and switch it off. Um, again, I haven't done it here, but uh, I have done it when I'm abroad. Uh, 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 of course, uh, portability and all that is needed to 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 consider when you select the IVAD or the ILVAD or the BIVAD or the total artificial heart for the patient uh, improving quality of life. Bleeding and thrombosis, we talked about it basically. So in, uh, in heart mates, uh, you have warfarin and aspirin. In hardware, you have triple anticoagulation therapy and uh, needing a higher range of INR between 2.5 to 3.5 or 3 to 4 um, with many, many anti anticoagulation. Uh, um, uh, how you treat uh, thrombosis, uh, you can start with uh, heparin infusion and uh, uh, and uh, of course, you need to anticipate volume and make sure that the preload is filling uh, properly uh, to have a post uh, to have a, an afterload. Uh, uh, you might need to do uh, streptokinase and uh, and induce slowly uh, uh, lytics to to break all these uh, thrombus and. Uh, you have to watch out for uh, acute uh, cerebrovascular accidents. Um, uh, 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 after after that, when the patient is stabilized and everything, you have to make sure that your INR is no longer two to three; it's going to be three to four. And a closer uh, follow-up for the anticoagulation. What other uh, problems? Infection, uh, uh, and it, it's rated thirty uh, percent. Uh, you have uh, also uh, infection. It's it's a huge topic. I can't uh, again go in details, but infection can be so many drive line infection, deep pocket infection. Uh, it can lead into because it's near the lungs, so especially in total pressure heart, so it can lead into a chronic uh, pneumonia and uh, and uh, a chronic uh, lung, uh, device of deep pocket infection. Uh, long life anti uh, antibiotics are needed until transplant. A transplant might be urgent uh, if it is untreated driveline infection that led to into deep pocket infection because the deep pocket infection is induced by the driveline. If it is not properly treated, then it goes deep inside. And if it's not treated, then 80% dies of these patients. So it's a very, very serious complication. Yes, Moya. So uh, <clears throat> infection also has been observed. Uh, in uh, patients who are uh, implanted with pulsatile devices. Um, infection, uh, driveline infection uh, can cause blood uh, stream infection, but deep uh, pocket infection is for sure causing a bloodstream infection. And that's gonna be a uh, long life. It's like an endocarditis, that sort of chronic infection. It's a uh, low grade fever, comes and goes, fatigue, malaise, cachexia. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, persistent, slightly elevated WBC, slightly elevated ESR and CRPs, and slightly elevated procalcitonin, pro but the patient is going to die because uh, this is a chronic uh, infection uh, in bloodstream, and it's pussy, and it's nasty. And I, I have experienced that here in a, in a, in a, a syncardia patient where I had to uh, 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 explant the syncardia and I had to transplant this patient. So it's it's disgusting when it happens because it's chronic, it kills your kidney, it kills your liver, uh, and it kills sometimes your lung, and it def uh, definitely it, it kills the, the patient. Suck down, I've talked about that, uh, treating suck down, I've also talked about that. Basically, you lower the RPMs in the LVAD, you uh, give volume if it's rehydration, if it's RV failure, you uh, treat the RV failure, you give nitric oxide, you start diuresing the RV, you start, uh, uh, um, uh, if, it's a, if it's acute, uh, you give as much known as possible for low duration possible to relax because it has been induced by something, whether it is uh, dehydration or rehydration. 
And uh, if it's a chronic thing, then good luck because you're gonna start to think of adding an RVAD in a patient who already has an LVAD and then that redo is a nightmare. Or you have to simply hospitalize the patient on IV diuresis and uh, melanone until you get a heart. And trust me, it's not a nice uh, thing to see on daily basis in your face, the patient waiting for over than six months. <clears throat> Device failure, we talked about it. It, it. it can be due to a lot of things magnetic that we don't understand uh, and no one understands except, not even engineers understand because the company hides it uh, from us. Hemolysis, I've mentioned, thrombosis can cause hemolysis mainly and it's more uh, seen in the uh, non-pulsatile. Treating hemolysis is like treating any normal hemolysis caused by sickle cell or whatever. Um, you give the uh, uh, peripheral IV, you give uh, painkillers if the patient was in pain due to the, 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 the obstruction ischemic uh, caused by the hemolysis. If uh, you, you try to treat the liver, you try to, to give more blood transfusion, you try to reduce the speed of the VAD, you try to give latex if it's thrombus, you do uh, again uh, uh, um, uh, testing echocardiography for the uh, thrombosis and uh, and uh, there is no other cause for the hemolysis. Um, uh, these are uh, basically the, the results for uh, over 10 years or usually 10 years and differentiation between the intracorporeal and paracorporeal uh, VADs and uh, adding the, the axial and centrifugal and the total artificial heart into them. And uh, as you see that the majority are the LVAD uh, being utilized since uh, HeartMate started. Uh, it came out in 2007, HeartMate or A, uh, yeah, end of seven, I remember, and eight start to be utilized and you can see it from eight to, to 14, it peaked at 12. And then in 13, HeartMate 3 came and HeartMate where came in, uh, in, uh, in 12, uh, 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 HeartMate came in 12 and HeartMate came in 13. So you can start seeing that Exia starts slowing down on blue, which is HeartMate and HeartWare, HeartMate 2 and HeartWare, HeartMate 3 and HeartWare, uh, this is the blue one, start to expand. And now in 2020, it's mainly HeartMate uh, 3 and HeartWare, which is the blue. Um, uh, this is basically t telling the differences between the pulsatile and non-pulsatile and the centrifugal. Uh, 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 this is the, the implantation uh, uh, the, um, of, of uh, devices and the transplant uh, patients get transplanted on, on the implanted devices. So it's even getting worse and worse right now. Um, it has been 50% on MCS uh, at the time of transplant. It's now reaching 80% on MCS at uh, reaching that time of transplant. So uh, more patients are uh, being prolonged with the therapy and uh, more patients uh, uh, who are receiving hearts are uh, being valuable. And that what led the USA to change this year their guidelines of UNOS, the United, Unified Nation of, uh, of uh, uh, Organ uh, System. So it, it, uh, the, uh, the, the classification for urgency, basic, the super urgent, the urgent. Uh, so it has all changed because all hearts are going to, to different patients who are, uh, could be less needed than the other patients. Um, uh, some, some slides I would like to show you here, the, uh, the presence of that, um, <clears throat> the timing uh, is, uh, is crucial. So levels mean the intermax. Intermax one is non-durable devices. If you put the durable devices, you have a really high uh, percentage of death uh, and less percentage of survival. Intermax two and three is the best timing to, to implant with 80% uh, survival. Four to seven is, uh, so this has became better by time and this has became worse uh, by time. So Intermax four to seven is better survival. Intermax one is worse survival. Um, uh, um, so this is tells you if you have uh, uh, LVAD and BIVAD uh, uh, implantation in era one, two, three, meaning uh, if the patient has surgery first time or second time or third time, of course, the more the surgery, previous surgeries, the worse the outcome. Uh, this is basically the differences uh, uh, 
uh, um, between uh, um, patients who are uh, being alive on the on the, on the device and uh, the transplanted one and their survival rates. Uh, survival rates are really reduced with the BIVAD patients. Um, uh, um, the bridge to candidacy is is uh, is uh, is uh, increasing with time because. We started to vet almost everyone, and and that will affect our program and our heart transplant program. Um, these are the differences between the first generation and the millennial, and the second generation after 2008, and uh, their outcome. And of course, the uh, uh, centrifugal LVAD, which is HeartMate uh, 3 and Heartware, have a better outcome than XZL. The XZL, which is HeartMate 2, have a better outcome than the BIVAD. And uh, whether BIVAD XZL or whether BIVAD centrifugal. So, uh, and this is the survival rate between the BIVAD total artificial heart. It, it tells you that. Uh, Really, there is a huge difference. Once you put an RVAD, you really lose a patient. It, it drops down from almost 90% to down to 50% adding a VAD. And in our experience, if you add a VAD uh, planned electively, like the studies I've showed you, uh, you have a survival of 70, 75% of the by -VAD. If you add the VAD one day later or, 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 or 10 hours later, uh, uh, 10 hours later than the LVAD, 100% mortality, just for you to know. So if you plan the RVAD, you might get away with a patient. If you don't plan the RVAD, then your patient fails after four hours and you implant the RVAD for nine hours after LVAD implantation, you're gonna kiss that patient goodbye. Complexity matters, uh, the, the, the comorbidities and the intermax, patient survival drops with the, dropping the intermax. This is basically showing the quality of life and uh, prior and how post it improves and all the problem goes away and all the, the admissions and uh, gets away. Uh, this is a slide that uh, intermax between four and seven should be treated medically because it's almost equal results to LVAD implantation. Now the companies are really making it uh, sound better uh, to push intermax four into, into uh, LVAD uh, uh, category and I, I really advise you not to follow that because they are it's completely company driven and no pure result the momentum trial they put some results but it we all know that momentum trial can be biased <clears throat> so these are the complication I'm not gonna go into them and um, this is basically the momentum trial that they went to um, I can I can go through that uh, if you want. Um, uh, uh, I'll I'll go through that. I'm I'm quite tired to be honest, but I'll go through that. Um, the RVAD uh, implantation, the addition, which exactly what I showed you here. Look at how significant uh, 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 a drop in the RVAD and the critical care. So. In, in critical care one and two and three patients, it tells you in, in, in short, this, uh, this slide tells you the sicker the patient, the lower the intermax is the higher chance of RV failure. And if RV failure existence, then death exists doubled or tripled. In some papers, quadrupled the death uh, rate in that. Um, these are the complication and it, and it shows you between 10 to 20%, as I told you, an infection is really high. Um, and, and these are the major occurrences of, uh, uh, of uh, all the complications, as you see. And also complicated, so this is the freedom, uh, gentlemen and ladies. This is the freedom of complication. That's why, so the freedom was high in the beginning and it goes low and low and low and low at the third year. And this, there is a message out of this. The longer the patient on the MCS, the higher the chance that he's going to get all these complications. So my message to myself before anyone else is do not vet any patient. Intermax four, five, six, seven, do not touch them because you're going to prone them into all these things because trust me, no one will transplant these patients. And these patients can live for five years, 10 years of medical therapy. You're going to make them live two years and then start complication and worsen their uh, quality of life and kill them. Why? Put that on your hand. And, and all is company driven. And I have to tell you, I'm a consultant for four uh, uh, companies. 
uh, for VAT companies, and I still fight them on that regards and challenging them on, on big conferences because we have a message, it's patient care. We have to make sure that, 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 that we are applying the guidelines and, and, uh, and know the guidelines by heart. And trust me, I mean, I've read the guidelines a thousand times in the past and I didn't understand them until I started writing the, the new guidelines, the 2020, because I did have to dig deep into all the evidence uh, uh, um, of, of the papers who were utilized and the, 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 the differences between the, the evidence type A and B and C and where it was applied into patients who are needing uh, MCS. So I, I, I really invite you to, to, to uh, having uh, uh, read, read as much as you can and read the guidelines of ISHLT and make sure that you really understand anything. And if you don't, please don't hesitate to call me. <clears throat> this is basically the same thing. It's the continuous flow versus the, the pulsatile flow. So just in summary, mechanical support is important and uh, and we are more and more utilizing due to the donor shortage. But to stop utilizing and stop having heart failure patients, please, if a patient comes with these symptoms, uh, even class three NEHA, they have to be referred immediately from the cardiologist to the heart failure cardiologist. We have to use the heart failure cardiologist and there are more and more uh, coming in the kingdom and we have to uh, uh, utilize them, utilize our resources to make sure that the patient doesn't need VAD and doesn't need transplant because that's the most important thing for survival is to make sure that the patient is not uh, in need of that. Um, uh, any question? <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Faras. You're welcome.